Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and we have unofficially made it. Let's just go with that. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, that means you're new here. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, for the rest of you, we're on the letter Z. We made it through the alphabet. So uh, we'll see how we do with this one. Now for uh, the other of you that uh, are new and popping in, I'm going to give a shout out to my little five-year-old who gave me the uh, fun and creative idea of using the alphabet to do the 30 day, uh, 30 days of survival challenge, which is the month of September is national preparedness month. Now, uh, small caveat, uh, for those that, uh, think that I am done because there's 30 days in September, uh, I do have four more videos. And if you look at the thumbnail, uh, maybe the little symbols will give you a clue what the next four days are. So uh, if this is your first time up here in the end of the video, I have a, the card there that you can watch the videos up until this one. And I think I covered the uh, intro there. So uh, let's jump right into it because I already said it is the letter Z. So the first word that we're going to do is zero. Now, zero can be good or zero can be bad. Uh, if I'm having some sort of a medical emergency, and I have zero medication or medical supplies, that's a bad thing. If I am starving and I have zero food, it's a bad thing. If I'm really, really thirsty and I have zero water, it's a bad thing, right? But the same can be true. If I have somebody throwing rocks at me and zero hit me, that's a good thing, right? Uh, if I have, uh, you know, a bunch of income and zero bills, that's a good thing, right? Uh, if I have a bunch of friends and zero enemies, again, that's a good thing. So zero can be used as a way to uh, measure. It's a, it's a metric of good or bad. It just depends on, again, the situation that you're in. You want to try and have more good zeros, right? Uh, so make sure that, uh, at least when it comes to zero, that you're kind of that glass half full kind of person. If you look at something and the zero turns out to be a bad thing, um, how many days can I eat past uh, 30? Well, I only have 30 days worth of food. Well, then the answer is zero, and that's probably not a good thing if you want to have 60 days worth of food, right? Um, if I have a medical emergency, how uh, how's my skills? Do I have any training whatsoever in the medical industry? If the answer is zero... Okay, maybe you want to uh, take a class or two, so that way uh, you can elevate and become more experienced. So, uh, the next word that I want to get into is zigzag. I know I'm reaching a bit, stick with me. Uh, so, we can use this in a bunch of different ways. Uh, one, it's a really good thing of using it as a defensive mechanism. Uh, if you think you're being followed, uh, you know, don't head straight home or head straight whatever, you know. You can zigzag. You might be able to lose somebody um, or at least not give them a very easy uh, thing that they can you know, memorize very easily. If they just got to go right here and turn left, uh, that's that's easy to memorize. If they've got to go here, 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 uh, it's, it's a lot harder. Uh, but two, uh, when it comes to that, is to make sure that you are... Uh, getting outside of your routine. Routines can sometimes, not all the time, uh, but sometimes create uh, that mundane feeling. Uh, it's okay to shake things up, freshen things up. Um, also, uh, when you get into a routine, there's a lot of people that may be watching that uh, may use your routine against you. They'll know where you are, what you're doing, at what specific time of day. And so if you shake things up, uh, it kind of creates that zigzag pattern. Uh, they know that you've got to go to the garden. They know you've got to go to feed the animals and all that. But if you switch it up, you do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And the next time you do both in the morning, it, it's harder to tell where you're going to be at what specific time. Uh, and then it becomes a guessing game. So you can use that, uh, you know, as well. The next one is going to be the word zap, and I'm going to use that in probably what way you guessed it, electricity. So if we get into an SHTF situation, 
what is your game plan to have power? Are you going to use solar, which is very popular and probably a lot of people's plan? Uh, probably the same level, maybe a little above or below, is some sort of generation, whether that's going to be uh, gas, diesel, propane, whatever, even solar. Uh, is that going to be your your uh, thing that you rely on to, to get power? Uh, now there are people out there that have wind power. There are people that do uh, hydropower. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do to generate power. Um, now, granted, yes, you can make the argument you do not need to have power to survive. For most people, um, there is ones that, you know, for medical or, or other reasons, uh, they, they need to have electricity in order to live. Uh, for uh, a lot of the average people, you don't need power. It provides a lot of luxury. It provides a lot of wants. Um, it fills some of the holes and, and gaps and things like that. Uh, but it's not a necessity. You don't have to have it. So uh, to have some sort of generation it would be a very good thing. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. If, if anything, it would be one that I would uh, kind of highly suggest that you consider uh, now which way you go depends entirely up to you because uh, you can it, it goes on the level of what you need and what your finances are uh, if you don't need very much power and you don't have very many finances there's options out there um, if you need a lot of power but your finances are low you're going to have to get a lot more creative uh, vice versa if you have a lot of finances but you need you know a little power or to a lot of power uh, the finances opens up a lot of doors, but again, you know, you're still going to have to do your re research. You have to figure out uh, what's the minimum that you need and shoot for that. And then, uh, you know, try and do your research. There's a lot of them that you can uh, parallel off and, and buy another generator and, you know, double your power. Uh, th there's a lot of options, but I want to get you considering what is your off-grid power station so uh, the last z that i want to hit is the word zest now there's two different definitions of this and i'm going to cover them both the first if you look at it is uh enthusiasm somebody that demonstrates great enthusiasm for something so uh using that in a, se a sentence uh, i am a very zestful person when it comes to preparedness and i want to use that because People often look at, and I see this a lot with the ones that uh, they've been doing this for a while, and I call it prepper fatigue, but uh, make sure that you are excited about it. Figure out what it is that, that you know you really like to enjoy, and when you start getting that uh, kind of pent up, you know, this, this is starting to get boring, or I'm starting to get frustrated or whatever, it's okay to step back from something for, you know, a short period of time. And go do something fun, you know, the, the thing that kind of uh, reinvigorate yourself. So uh, make sure you figure out what brings that zestfulness out of you. And it's okay to focus on that for a very short period of time to, to relight that fire and get you excited. This shouldn't be when you, when you start going, oh, I got to do my preps, you know. When it starts becoming that... That's a, that's a red flag. You, you need to step back and try and, and figure something out. Now, not all of prepping is fun and exciting. Not all of prepping is that sexy, really fun, sleek, you know, everything. It's, it's, it's adulthood, right? Uh, you got to take the good with the bad. And uh, you, you just kind of got to muscle through some of the stuff. Uh, but the other part of zest is flavorful. Uh, you know, when you're talking about uh, things like fruits and whatnot, when you uh, start getting some of that peel and things like that that they use for flavoring, that's what I want to hit at is make sure that you have flavoring. Now, again, do you have to have it to survive? No, it's going to be a luxury item, but it's going to be a very cheap, shelf-stable, for the most part, luxury item. It's going to make things a lot more palatable. If you're going to go into a very long-term SHTF, chances are probably a little higher that you're going to eat things that you don't normally like. Uh, maybe a few things that you nor don't or probably wouldn't normally eat. 
and to have some strong flavors that you do enjoy to mask uh, some of that, it's probably going to help, right? It's a, it's a luxury item that if you can, I, I would go towards it. Um, there's a lot of people that come to me and they go, uh, should I get this? And they, you know, we'll, we'll talk back and forth and then I will ask about what their finances are. And they'll tell me that uh, they, they really, really want it and they're really, really close. It's $200 and all this other stuff. And when I come to find out about it, let's just say that they want a, a new firearm. Well, I'll ask them, how many do you have? Well, I have six. Okay, so what do you want another one for? Well, you know, this, that, and all that. So they give me some reasons and I go, do you have things like a bullion cube? Well, well, no. Okay. Do you have, you know, this, do you have that? Do you have, and I'm talking, usually the items I'm mentioning are, are $5 or less and they're going, no, no, no. And a lot of times it's no through the whole list. And I go, you know, if you're asking me in my personal opinion, I would consider picking up some of those items since you already have that one pretty well taken care of. Now, if you would have answered yes to all of mine, then you've already talked yourself into it, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's your money. You do what you want to do, right? You're just coming and asking what my thoughts are. So, uh, but that's my four. Let's go to the last honorable mention of this series. And that's going to be the word zoo. And I can go into a bunch of different ones. Remember, I have a pretty cr uh, active, uh, creative mind when it comes to these. So uh, this whole series has been really fun. But uh, what's popular in a zoo well, the first thing is animals, right? And so uh, if you already homestead, farm, or anything like that, where you have animals on the farm, uh, you know what it's like to kind of run a zoo. Uh, now, at most zoos, at least I know of, um, you have animals that you got to take care of, but you also have food, restrooms, uh, places to sit down, uh, places to kind of cool off, um, meeting places, staff, things like that. And that kind of goes into what it's going to be somewhat. Now, granted, you're going to have to kind of roll with me on this one. But after SHTF, it's going to feel like you're running a zoo. Uh, you, there's going to be things running all over. Um, things are going to uh, happen out of your control. And it, it's going to be one of those ones to where you're going to do the best you can each and every day. Every day is going to be a new surprise, a new challenge. New issues are going to arise. And you have to control every thing that's breathing in there, right? You have to make sure at the beginning of the day to the end of the day, uh, everything that is alive should, unless you're having food, uh, is alive at the end of the day, right? That, that's kind of the, the main goal of it all. Uh, and then you take into, you know, the health and the happiness and all the other things. But, uh, you know, that that's kind of my playful take on all this is, uh, you know, if, if you're going to compare something to what it's going to feel like, um, that that's probably a pretty decent one, at least in my opinion. So, uh, but that's what I've got for you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode as well as all the other ones that we did throughout the alphabet. Uh, now stick with me. I do have four more. I uh, think you will enjoy those as well, but we're at the end of the episode. So I do want to issue the challenge. What things did I leave off the list? What starts with the letter Z that we can add to this list? Because again, this channel is not here to create the list. I'm get the list started. And then I want us as a community to fill that list out. Uh, this takes a village, this takes a team. And uh, I just want to see what you guys come up with. Uh, so far, there's been quite a few people that have participated and come up with some really, really great answers. Uh, a few have even come up with things I didn't even think to put on my own list. So, uh, you know, bravo, hats off to you. So uh, that's what I've got for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I hope you have a blessed day. Stay tuned because there's more information to come. And with that, I want to remind you, remain united because we're all prepping in this together. <laughs>